So let's take a look at a worked example involving lightning strike analysis. And the scenario that we have is we have some transmission line towers that are 36 meters apart, tall and they're spaced 300 meters apart. And these are joined together by a, sh a ground shield wire that has a surge impedance of 540 ohms. And the tower footing re surge impedance or resistance is going to be 20 ohms. Um, we're going to assume that the ground wire is actually struck by lightning first, and it's going to get struck 50 meters from the last tower on the circuit. And I'll show you a picture of this in just a little bit. And then this is going to be kind of a massive lightning strike in this case where we're going to assume a peak 100 kiloamps that gets reached in two microseconds. And after that it's going to tail off. So the tower surge impedance is 120 ohms. That's kind of a typical value, a little bit over 100 ohms for a tower. And we'll just assume that these disturbances travel at 2.9 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. If we're talking about the speed of light, that would be 3 times 10 to the 8. So typically these waves are going to travel slightly less than the, the speed of light. So what I want to find out is I want to see what's going to happen to the tower top potential as a function of time. And what we're going to look at is we're going to look at this for the, the first uh, 0.5 microseconds in, in this case. So we're going to look at it right after the surge makes contact with the tower. So what we're really kind of concerned about is what's going to be the initial voltage and then what we're going to see is because of the reflection from the bottom that basically what that does is that serves to attenuate the, the voltage response a little bit. And then we could take a look at in PSCAD, you know, what's going to be the difference in the grounding impedance. All right. So anyway, this is a drawing which basically kind of shows the the same thing. It's just easier to see if you got things in terms of a sketch. So what I've got in this case is I've got two towers. The tower on the right, we'll just assume it's the last tower on the circuit. So I don't really care to the to what's the right of that. And then what we're going to have is we're going to have this ground wire at the top, and you can see that the lightning is going to be striking 50 meters from that tower on the right. So I'm just basically just labeling it things out in this diagram with all the different impedances and the distances and, and everything else. And so anyway, this is just a little schematic of what we're trying to solve for. So anyway, when we work this out, this is kind of the, the hand analysis in this particular case. The stroke model, what we know is that we're going to hit 100 kiliampers in... Um, in this two microseconds, all right. Um, the way we're actually going to model this right here is we're actually going to model this using the change in current with respect to time. You know, in the past when we've done the analysis, we assumed a fixed voltage. However, what we need to be modeling on here is we need to be modeling more the, the DIDT in this case. And what we're going to do is multiply that by the impedance and then multiply by time to get what that instantaneous voltage is because if we have a triangular waveform as the current increases then the voltage is going to be increasing with time as well and so we just can't wait till it hits a peak and do the analysis based on that peak because the the effect that we're looking at is actually going to be occurring before we actually hit that 100 kiliampere peak so when I do the modeling what you're going to see on here is when I when I represent this is I'm going to do this using um, a prime value and what that prime IS prime represents is that represents a change and so this change is going to be the 100 kiliampers divided by 2 microseconds basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working with the slope and if this lightning is going to hit 50 meters out from the tower then basically what's going to happen is because these two surge impedances in the left path and the right path are the same, basically the current's going to split. It, you can think about this as just simply a current divider. So I'm going to have a current divider effect, 
and basically going to have half of this mount go to the right toward the tower. Now the analysis actually begins when that surge hits the top of the tower. That's actually what we're doing the analysis for in this particular case. And so when, I, when I'm doing the analysis of this case, what I'm going to be doing is setting my clock up where um, basically time equals zero is going to correspond to when I hit the top of this tower. So once it hits the top of the tower, it's going to travel down this um, tower that has a surge impedance of 120 ohms. Um, it's going to hit this grounding impedance of 20 ohms, and then some of this energy is going to get reflected back. And basically what we're looking at is we're looking at this waveform traveling back and forth on this tower. We're going to assume that what's going to happen in this case is, as far as the tower on the left, that's pretty far away. That's 250 meters away. So no reflection coming back from the tower is going to play into this problem. Everything is going to be kind of over in the time frame that we're looking about. What we're looking at. So what's going to be traveling to the right if if I've got S, IS prime is going to be a voltage traveling wave. The change in voltage with respect to time is going to be the characteristic impedance times the current. Where that current now is going to be one half of 100 kiliampere divided by two microseconds, so that's DIDT. Multiply that by 540 ohms. So what this means, as far as a change in voltage with respect to time, that's going to be a triangular wave that's going to be changing at 13,500 kV per microsecond. That's a lot of voltage, right? But it's a monster. It's a monster current injection. So anyway, when when I do the analysis and the way this is going to work is I'm going to have this change in voltage be kind of the, the traveling wave on the overhead line, uh, 13,500 kV per microsecond. And what I'm going to be doing then is I'm going to be needing to have the refraction coefficient for what amount of that voltage goes from overhead to the tower. I'm going to need to have a reflection coefficient on the bottom, and I'm going to need to have a reflection coefficient in the top so I can see what happens as that lightning waveform travels back and forth on the tower. Tau in this case for the tower is going to be the height of the tower, 36 meters, divided by the speed, 2.9 times 10 to the eighth. And basically the travel time down the tower is just simply going to be 0.124 microseconds. So a lot can actually um, happen in the time frame we're, we're looking at. So at the tower top, as far as the refraction, how much of the um, overhead ground um, waveform gets into the tower, I use a refraction coefficient. That's 2ZB over ZB plus ZA. So in this case, ZB is the, the surge impedance of the tower. So what I'm going to have is I'm going to have 2 times 120 divided by 540 plus 120, which gives me a refraction coefficient of 0.364. Then when I hit the bottom of the tower, then I have a reflection coefficient. So you got ZB minus ZA. In this case, ZB is the footing resistance. A is going to be the tower impedance. So I've got 20 minus 120 over 20 plus 120. So that's going to give me a reflection of minus 0.714. And so you can see in this case, since the tower impedance was low, that I'm going to get a um, attenuating effect once that reflection hits the top of the tower. Then at the tower top, then I've got another reflection coefficient to consider. Um, this is going to be ZB minus ZA over ZB plus ZA, where in this case ZB is a surge impedance of the ground wire, which is 540. ZA is going to be the tower impedance. So this reflection coefficient at the tops is going to be 0.636. Um, so now to analyze this, I can do a pulse bounce diagram. And I go ahead and set that up, and I'm just doing it for the tower. So time equals zero corresponds to when the, the waveform hits the top of the tower. And what I'm going to do is going from left to right, that's going from the tower top to the tower footing. On the left-hand side, I've got the time scale. 
So basically, this is going to be calibrated in terms of travel time down the tower, 0 tau, 2 tau, 3 tau, etc. And so what happens is I start off with this 13,500 kV per microsecond, and to find out what gets into the tower, I have to multiply by that refraction coefficient of 0.364. So 0.364 times the 13,500 gives me 4,914 kV per microsecond as far as the, the slope of the waveform that gets into the tower. It hits the bottom of the tower, it gets reflected back using the reflection coefficient of minus 0.714. So I multiply that by 4914 and I get minus 3509 kV per microsecond reflected back. Then this waveform hits the top of the tower and then it gets reflected back toward the bottom again using a reflection coefficient of 0.636. Um, multiply that by the minus 3509 and I got reflected back minus 2231 kV per microsecond and then you just keep populating the rest of this um, pulse bounce diagram right here keeping in mind that these values are in terms of kV per microsecond they're not magnitude terms they're slopes so what I need to do is I need to interpret that slope correctly so what I'm gonna have between at the tower top from the time this waveform hits the tower top to when it gets reflected back that's going to take 2 tau so between time 0 up to 2 tau what I'm going to have is I have that slope of 4914 kV per microsecond what I need to do to get the absolute value of voltage I need to multiply that by time so if I do that, and if I plug in 2 tau right before that waveform um, from the bottom of the tower until that hits up to 2 tau, basically what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a voltage that's going to peak out at 1219. So what it actually does is actually starts from zero and just increases linearly with the slope of 4914. And then as I increase time, then it just simply grows, 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 grows till it actually peaks out at 1219. Now, after 2 tau, what happens is we start seeing the reflections from the bottom of the tower. So what I need to do is to get the new slope, to get the new change, I need to take the 4914, add to that minus 3509, add to that minus 2231. And what this gives us for the net slope now for that waveform is minus 826 kV per microsecond. So now I take the value that I had at 2 tau, and now I start tracking the change. And the change now is going to be minus 826 times T minus 2 tau. Okay, so i got to make sure I subtract off 2 tau and do everything relative to when I get those bottom of tower reflections back at the top of the tower. So now it's going to drop now because the slope's negative. And eventually when I hit 4 tau, then that's actually going to drop to the point where that's going to drop down to 10,014. Now if you look at the reflections coming back, um, the reflections coming back are actually values that are positive. So what this is going to do, this is going to cause the, the voltage to start rising again. But what we're kind of concerned with is we're, we're kind of concerned with what's going to be that initial peak. And if the footing resistance was such that it enabled us to kind of cap that voltage. So anyway, this kind of shows how you can do this by hand. What we'll do next is we'll, we'll take a look at what this would look like in PSCAD.